Having only been born at the tail end of the 19th century, Charles Brady had never given the slightest thought of the possibility of life forms from another planet visiting Earth. That is, until the day when such beings physically took him right off the planet. If that wasn't traumatizing enough, those same beings repeated the same process on several other occasions. The nagging fear that he suffered on a daily basis over the possibilities of future abductions, combined with the very terrestrial concerns, sent him scurrying across the United States in the hope that neither the people who were abducted from off the planet nor his earthly fears would catch up to him. Read how Charlie deals with all this in The Big Orange Flying Dinner Plate Written by Luther Gwynn Narrated by J.J. Hassenfeld Alright, so we are back for another book review. I've actually had a lot of book reviews lately. That's why I did the whole mini-march last month. Which I really hope everybody enjoyed. So, today I'm looking at something a little different than I was expecting. And if you saw my previous videos, then you know that at the beginning of each book review, I'm going to give you a quick, a brash, did I enjoy it, should you check it out. And I'm not going to keep repeating this, but I just want to make that clear for the first few times I'm doing book reviews. This is how the beginning is going to go. After I get past the intro... And let you know. Then I'll dive deep. And there could be spoilers from that point on. Once I start ranking each section. Like I normally rank. So. This book. The Big Orange Flying Dinner Plate. Did I enjoy it? I enjoyed this quite a bit. Which you'll come to find by the end of this review. If you are into science fiction. If you are into drama, there's not a whole lot of action. There's a little bit, but not much. I definitely would suggest, if you like this kinds of stories, if you want something that feels very realistic, then you should definitely stop the video here. Go check this out. Then come back and see if you agree or disagree with my thoughts. With that said, let's jump into the review. So starting with the cover and title. For the cover and title, I'm giving this five stars. The cover is very well done for the audiobook, for the paperback. I mean, I don't have any real complaints other than, you know, there's a little bit of, like, these black bars, which kind of feel like a movie. But, you know, that's just it. Is I could see this, actually, as a movie. As for the title, it's a little bit wordy, in my opinion, for a solo book. Definitely, if this was a franchise, Big Orange Flying Dinner Plate. Is a lot to say, but it really fits this book very well. And what I'll dive into later, because I'm probably going to say this much later many times, is I do see this as a franchise. So I feel like it needs a franchise name, something it can play off of. But for this book alone, definitely worth a read 
or a listen to. Honestly, I definitely suggest the audiobook. But we'll dive into why in a little bit. Now moving into the writing. And for the writing, I have to give this five stars. Now, the reason I'm giving this five stars in the writing is it's entirely told to you, the entire story, everything is told to you in the first person perspective. So you never leave what the main character is witnessing or seeing. And there is so much lore brought into this story. The writer took really good care to establish lore and exposition that most of the time, 99% of the time, didn't make you feel bored from hearing it. I'd say there was 0.1% where, or one point of percentage that, uh, there were a few things that were a little often repeated here and there. But, I mean, if you're listening to this in segments, that might be a good thing if you're listening to it or if you're reading it to kind of refresh. But I feel like there were maybe a few sentences, very rarely, that were sort of repeated. Like I said, it doesn't really stick out like a sore thumb. It doesn't happen very often. It's very rare. It's maybe 1% of the time. But you feel like this is realistic, though, to this character. Which I'll talk about more when I get to characters. It's very realistic for the character to probably repeat things the way they do. Because that's how humans talk. Sometimes we try to drill home a certain thing when we're talking and explaining a story. Now moving into the narration. And for the narration, I have to give this five stars. J.J. Hosenfeld did a very, very good job. I don't know if this is the way he naturally talks, but I fully believed he was that character from... Like Louisiana, I believe, is where most of the story starts off from. You know, oh, Al- wait, no, it's Alabama, I think. It's either Louisiana or Alabama. I want to say it's Alabama. Pretty sure it is. But still, you hear it, you know. He does a very good job at mimicking the proper. Tones and accents for these characters. And you feel like, you know, even when he's mimicking somebody else talking, yes, it sounds like this guy, Charles Brady, trying to do an imitation of the people he's met. And it doesn't really take you out of, oh, it doesn't really sound like them. Because the entire story being told from a first person, you have people who, tr- you know, when they're talking in long conversations and going, trying to pretend to be other people, they do their best to do an imitation of that person. So that, to me, it never broke the reality of the story. So... That's why I'm giving him five stars. Now moving on to the biggest section. And the biggest section is story. And for story, I'm going to give this five stars. With one little tiny huge nitpick on my part. But I'll tell you the nitpick at the end. And I'm going to recommend something. You don't have to take my recommendation. You don't have to take my opinion. 
but I'll put it out there in case you're deciding to watch this review without reading the book first. So, the entire story, like I been saying is told from the first person point of view of a man who basically lived in the early 1900s and while that is very good extremely good because you don't really get a lot of those not with you know alien reduction stories as far as I know this entire book the entire time it felt very much like the movie Forrest Gump. Not like the main character was that kind of special. You know, where he had some sort of, you know, uh, learning disability or something. Just the manner in which the way the narrator read the character. Uh, a lot of things the character would say and do felt very, you know, mid... United States of that time era. You know, the character himself was very smart, very go get him, but he still had that, you know, I don't know what the term is. Because, see, I actually, I don't live in that area. You know, I, only movie I've ever really seen this is, like I said, Forrest Gump. You know, he has that sort of accent. He has that sort of manner in which that's how he talks, you know. So, imagine if you're watching Forrest Gump. But instead of all the major events, which there are some of those, you know, not nearly as many as Forrest Gump had major events, you know, crossing with history... But you do still have things like he talks about living through the Great Depression. He talks about the time of Prohibition. He talks about World War One. He talks about World War Two. He talks about, you know, automobiles becoming a big thing. All these key points in history get brought up. Which also helped it to feel like Forrest Gump. But it's like if Forrest Gump was abducted by aliens many times. And you weren't just seeing stuff like from history. But you're seeing some science fiction thrown in there too. So if you like Forrest Gump. If you like that type of drama. And you like sci-fi. This is going to be a perfect match for you. That day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. So I ran to the end of the road, and when I got there, I thought maybe I'd run to the end of town. President Carter, suffering from heat exhaustion, fell into the arms and of... when I got there, I thought maybe I'd just run across Greenbow County. And I figured since I run this far, maybe I'd just run across the great state of Alabama. And that's what I did. I ran clear across Alabama. I really don't have any other way to explain this. But, yeah. Now, moving into my nitpick. And my recommendation. So, for those of you who have constantly watched all my book reviews, audiobook reviews, sorry, um... You'll know, as a writer myself, one of the main things that I fully try to drive home, that I fully support and believe in, is having a book or having a story, whatever you want to call it, will go a story, but having a story that actually has stakes. And when I talk about this, I don't just mean stakes for the characters. I'm talking about stakes for the readers. You know, you 
as a writer, or me as a writer, and other writers, our jobs are to leave you, basically, we're, we're sort of like drug dealers, and the drug we're peddling is words, and we want you to be wanting more words every second. You can't get enough. You have to read just one more page. You have to know what's around that corner. And you can't get enough. You're addicted to our story. Why? Well, because we make the stakes high. We make the suspense and the need to go further. Now, true, most people who are, you know, proper and know that, okay, I have to put the book down because I have to go to my job, you know, they're going to stop themselves, but there's going to still be that drive that the second they get home and they get off work, they're going to run to that book or run to that thing you know that they're listening to it on like their phone or ipod whatever computer and they're going to want to hear more or they're going to want to read more my biggest nitpick with this book is that this book has sort of a prologue at the very beginning and while the prologue does not go into exact detail it does kind of lay out a mass majority of the major events in the book to come which I think at least for me it removed some of that suspense you know you knew from the prologue oh when this major event happens, he's going to be abducted. And because he's abducted, he bypasses that major event in his life. So, as I was listening, once that major event started getting talked about and was there, I'm like, oh, well, great. Now he's going to be abducted any time now. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. It didn't leave me in suspense for that moment. Had I not heard that prologue prior to the beginning of the book, and I had just started the book right away, I would have had no idea he was about to be abducted when that event happened, and it would have thrown me for a loop. It would have been like, what? He's going to miss that? He's not going to be there? That's so mean. I would have been shocked. I would have been like, what the heck? But I already knew this prior because of the prologue. And it's actually called a forward, but I'm just, to me, it came off like a prologue. And I don't want to say, I don't want to spoil how it is. So, my recommendation is basically this. If you're listening to this, or you're reading this, after you watch this review, just jump straight into the book. Skip the forward, skip the prologue. Go back to it after you finish. Because, honestly, I think if the writer had tweaked it just a little bit, it could have came at the end kind of like as an epilogue to this story. And as an epilogue, the way the prologue finishes or forward finishes, it would have left you guessing. It would have left you like, wait, so what happened? Are we ever going to find out? You know, it would have left you wondering how did this event play out? Because we only know so much. 
And it would have left you wanting a sequel. So. Now let's just go ahead though and move on to the characters. And for the characters I'm going to give it also five stars. Every character was perfectly described, perfectly talked about. I believed all the character characters. I think the author did a really good job plotting out and planning each character and each character's background. Now moving into the extras. And unfortunately, I really don't have any extras for this. Like I said, I mean, the only thing I can say is this does have this does have a prologue, but I don't usually score the extras. I just let you know if there's any. And yeah, so I mean, there is a prologue. I suggest skipping it. Not completely. Just read it after you read the main story. And then maybe on your next read, you can go ahead, because you're already going to have read the book, so it isn't going to take away reading the prologue at the beginning, you know? But if you want surprises, if you don't want to know basically all the major events of the book prior to the beginning of the book, check it out after you read the main book. With that said... Let's move into the final score. And for the final score of Big Orange Flying Dinner Plate, I have to give this a 10 out of 10. This was a awesome change of pace audiobook for me. Like I said, I've been in the mood for some other types of stories besides fantasy. I've had a little bit of that during this uh, mini march that I did, but only a little, and it wasn't as, you know, satisfying as some others. This to me was perfect. I love the movie Forrest Gump. I love sci fi movies and TV shows like Star Wars, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, um, Stargate SG 1. Speaking of which, Stargate SG-1. There's an alien race called the Nox. And I'm wondering if this is sort of a prequel to uh, that alien race. Because, uh, yeah. It definitely felt very familiar. To that the two could be the same Nox. Um, but no. Uh, I loved it. This was a great book. If you have not, I highly, highly suggest checking this out. I'm sorry that I just keep bringing up Forrest Gump, but it's the closest thing I can think of to match this book. And there's not like there's a whole lot of uh, actual abduction movies that are, or stories that I know of. I mean, there's some where it happens... But you're only seeing it on the earthly plane. Usually they're just talking about memories. They don't actually have... I mean, this has full-on chapters of what goes on on board the ship. From the time they're abducted to, you know, sometimes years passing by on board the ship. So... Definitely an interesting, completely new twist for me. Um, I should have mentioned this back when I was talking about the writing. But the writing also, in addition to my constant Forrest Gump reference, I did, I did get many times the feeling of like H.P. Lovecraft with character names. Uh, some of the way things are talked about, you know, because this is written during that time where H.P. Lovecraft was writing his stories about, you know, the 1920s and stuff. 
And a lot of this takes place in those early, early years of the U.S. You know, during the 1900s. So, it really felt like that to me. That it was very reminiscent of, like, H.P. Lovecraft. And the in-depth and the lore and exposition that is delivered really reminded me a lot of all the Stephen King novels I've ever heard or read. So, if you want Forrest Gump that was written by H.P. Lovecraft combined with Stephen King, this is definitely going to be a book that you are going to love. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> uh, if you have not, please consider checking out my book series, The Guardian of Light. I also have many short stories as well. Uh, book six, I'm hoping, will come out this December. So, yeah. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have not, please consider subscribing to this channel. Make sure to click the notification bell so you're notified the second a new video goes up. And... I will talk to you next time. Bye.